the key thing at this point is to be thinking about where the direction of public policy is going to go. So we know the government are in the process of implementing their net zero strategy. I think also the other thing I would encourage people to think about is where are their customers on climate change, sustainability? What's their view? So I think if you look at a lot of the surveys that are out there of public opinion, you'll find that the vast and now overwhelming majority of the public are on board with the idea that we need to do something about climate change. And they're not going to be hostile to firms saying we're doing this and the reason we're doing it is because we want to reduce your carbon footprint. However, I think what a lot of people in society don't yet know is, OK, what steps should I be taking? Uh, I think most people are fairly familiar with recycling and a few other things like using less plastic, but actually some of the more um, in-depth life cycle of their homes and their products um, questions around climate change they're perhaps less familiar with and they don't quite know what their role is so I think in terms of the actions the insurance companies can take is about actually sort of looking at when they interact with a customer how can they um, frame what they're doing as something that will help those customers reduce their own carbon footprint so you could look at that in the context of motor insurance and start thinking about actually we face a challenge, as a, a challenge as a society to get more and more people to switch to electric vehicles. Now, the government's got a pretty clear target in that area, but it's still a challenging target. Um, a number of people in society, the, the point at which they decide to get a new vehicle will be when they make an insurance claim because they've had their vehicle written off. So are there things insurers can do at that point to say, actually, these are the steps you would need to switch to an electric vehicle. This is the support an insurance company can offer. So that might be really simple things like making sure the policy terms are clear for your charging equipment um, actually maybe signposting people to what they would need to know about where the local charging infrastructure for them is um, those are quite simple steps but I think firms can just kind of I suppose in a way hold their customers hands through what might be a tricky process otherwise um, and I think the same will be true of energy efficiency the insurers could be thinking about signposting people to what they need to know um, when they're running a claim you know when they're actually doing repairs in people's homes making it clear that customers know what their choices are you know, if they've got an energy efficiency rating of a, you know, of a D or an E, you know, having a look at that report and thinking, what could you do um, at the same time as we're in your house doing our work? So you might be in doing a specific bit of repair, but customers may also be able to access, you know, some extra funding for some extra work. So I think it's a, where I'd encourage insurers to think about this is to think about what could happen at the same time as they're doing their work and how they can partner up with other bits of the economy. It will require different firms to think about their unique product offerings and where they can have the most help. I don't think we're going to have a single one size fits all model for this. And I think insurers will be kind of looking at ways that they can provide the best services for customers. But I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and, you know, and, and I, I think that's where the most of the innovations are coming. And I think you're starting to see firms develop that. So there's a few examples in the market of kind of tailored electric vehicle products. There's a few examples in the market now where um, firms are partnering up with other financial services providers to provide finance at the point you make a claim. Um, I think it's still early days. And I think the reason it's early days is because the government's policy framework is, is also early days. You know, they only launched the Net Zero strategy last year. Um, a lot of the kind of heat and building side of that is is still being worked out. Um, but I would say that in the next few years, you'll start to see that accelerate as the kind of the government fleshes out its policy that I think insurers can really look at where they play a role. So just think about the claims journey and where there are opportunities to embed more sustainable behaviours and maybe partner with other organisations. So that's step one. The second part is to think about the actual supply chain. Um, so that's something that we've put in our roadmap and the ABI is doing a lot of work on at the moment with our members is to think, what can we actually do to make the supply chain the industry relies on more sustainable? Um, in practice, I think that's going to be two things, making sure that the businesses that you partner with to deliver on claims are as sustainable as they can be, and that they've got good net zero credentials. And I think over time, it will be um, a you know, insurers will be looking at their supply chain and thinking, actually, we're going to always aim to choose a more sustainable business if we can and encourage the firms that we work with, many of whom, you know, they have very big contracts with insurance companies and it's a, we can, you know, really drive a strong incentive to say this is an opportunity to be more sustainable um, to set some high standards. Um, so it's, it's a case of actually looking at the supply chain in that context and just saying, actually, we'd like you to have the same net zero credentials that we have. Um, the second way that you can work the supply chain as well is, is what you actually choose. So, you know, a lot of firms are starting to look at green parts in the motor space, and some of that will be the same in the home space. Um, so using more recycled parts, using parts with more sustainable credentials, 
um, are all things that I think insurers can be actively looking at. And in many cases, customers don't even need to choose then, you know, your insurer will be picking what goes in, you know, what parts they use to repair a vehicle, what parts they use to um, repair a home. So I think there's an opportunity there to actually just embed more sustainability into, into the wider economy and drive change 